Well, say hello to the Nissan Magnite AMT. Nissan calls it the easy shift and it does make you wonder why wasn't it there before because the Magnite and the Kyger from Renault share its underpinnings and that car at time of launch had the AMT along with the CVT. So it does make you wonder what did Nissan think of when they said, you know what, let's not launch this AMT now, let's launch it two years later. Well, let's hear it from the top man at Nissan, Mr. Rakesh Srivastava, Managing Director, Nissan Motors India. Every company has its own plan. And for us, what we were wanting to address at that point of time was the manual transmission market and the CVT, as I said, is aspirational convenience, right? Because we felt that, that we would like to build the spectrum first from one end to the other end and then if need be as customers evolve and there is a requirement then fill in the gaps in between point is it is here now and we are going to find out exactly how good it is now to start off this amt is only available on the non-turbo versions which means the one liter engine naturally aspirated 72 horsepower and 95 nm if you want the turbo, you will have to settle with the CVT gearbox. Let's start with the AMT performance. Number one is the throttle response because you have to dig in quite a fair bit with the accelerator to get the gearbox going, to get that reaction out of it. And it just isn't a nice feeling because you press halfway down and there's nothing. And then suddenly it realizes, oh my God, yes, I have to respond and then it amps up. And unlike some other AMTs, this one is not conservatively programmed, so it can hold on to its gears until it's red line. The only way to drive it then is with a sedate foot. When you're in city, when you're in bumper to bumper traffic, that is when you will appreciate this gearbox because obviously you don't have to work the clutch. It's a big relief for your left foot and that is where it makes a big difference. But overall in terms of AMD performance, it's not the best. One good thing is that on uphill sections, you have that hit start assist, which means if you're parked on a slope, the car won't roll back. It will stop there as long as you are completely at a dead halt at zero kph. And then of course you have the manual functions as well. You can just slot it into M and then yes, you get a bit more control, but response time is still not the best and you have to be very, very easy on the accelerator. Now, obviously, this is not a car that focuses on driver involvement. You know, that acceleration is very, very weak. In fact, we just did a rough timing, not to autocar test standards, but it is over 20 seconds and that is quite long. I mean, with the same engine and the manual gearbox, the time was around 15.3 seconds for 0 to 100. So it is a very, very relaxed and laid back car. You cannot expect performance. Problem is overtaking is equally difficult because you put your foot down, that coarse sound and it takes its own sweet time to then pull out and overtake. Now in terms of exterior, there haven't been much changes. In fact, only two. You have the Easy Shift badge on the back and then you have this dual tone shade. Now this blue paint was available earlier, but you could only have it with a white roof. Now you can have it with a black roof. And on the inside, it is the same story. I mean, there is no change here. Practically, you have the same cabin, lots of storage space. The sense of space is nice. It's airy as well. Seats are very comfortable and the view out is very good too. As for the dynamics, Nissan hasn't made any mechanical changes to the Magnite which is why it drives and rides just like before. The steering is light and convenient, handling is good, and the ride comfort is impressive, especially over a bad road. So what's the verdict on this AMT? Well, to be honest, when the Magnet was launched around three years ago, it was the most inexpensive car in its segment. You know, it rivaled the likes of the Hyundai Venue, the Kia Sonnet, Maruti Vitara, Brezza. And since then, those cars have moved on. You know, the Venue is now a lot more tech loaded, a lot more refreshed, the Vitara is gone now, it's only the Brezza and again, it has seen a significant amount of improvement. The Magnite, however, hasn't. And compared to before, the Magnite now has a different sort of competition in the form of the subcompact SUVs. You have the likes of the Tata Punch and the Hyundai x Yes, they are not as large and spacious as this one, but they offer a lot for the money. However, the new AMT version is likely to continue to play its value card by undercutting the Tata Punch and Hyundai Extra when it comes to price. 
Now the pricing is not out for the Magnite yet, but we expect it to cost around 50 to 60 thousand more than the manual because that is how it is with the Renault Kyger, and we assume since they share so much, I mean this is also going to be at par. To sum it up, buyers aspiring to own an automatic compact SUV for hatchback money will find merit in the Magnite AMD's proposition, but only if you are on a strict and tight budget and require the car for city use predominantly. Else, the Magnite Turbo CVT is still the better combination and it is the Magnite we would recommend.